Hi, my name is Carson. I am a radio personality and nationally syndicated comedy writer. I've been cooking since I was in high school, working as a fry cook at Four Sons Truck Stop on I-80. And also, uh, I've been cooking for friends and other chefs and doing cooking demos for about 15 years. Uh, my goal is to demystify things that you may have been afraid to try and bring couples together uh, and really raise the bar when it comes to entertaining. What we're going to do today is one of my favorite savory soups and it is incredibly, incredibly simple to make. It is a butternut squash bisque and you're going to love it. So, let's get started. I've got one large butternut squash that I have peeled and cored and diced made it into relatively small pieces, nothing really tiny. Over here, I've got about half as many white potatoes, and I've done the same thing. This is about two and a half potatoes. You want about half of the squash in potatoes. One large yellow onion, finely chopped, two tablespoons of butter, you can use a little more because I love butter, and paprika, about a teaspoon of paprika. Over here, about a quart and a half of chicken broth. These are all you're going to need for butternut squash bisque. And we're going to head over and get that heated up. I'm heating up my butter right now. When the butter gets melted a little bit. I'm going to add this onion. And uh, we're going to saute the onion until it becomes translucent. Generally, whenever you're cooking, uh, chefs always say, saute the onion until it's translucent, which means basically it's soft and you'll be able to puree it later in your food processor. So I'm going to get that started. I'm going to add these onions, or this onion, I should say. It's one large yellow onion. I'm going to cook this for about five minutes. Few things in life smell as good as a fried onion. I think you'd have to agree with me on that. I think they should actually make a cologne out of it. Okay, maybe not. But it's a wonderful smell. It'll fill your whole house with a great scent. A lot of times when you're cooking soup, you'll add a little bit of salt and a little, little bit of pepper. I'm going to leave those out of it right now, just because I'm using a chicken broth that already has salt in it. I don't want to over-salt anything. And you really don't need the pepper for this either. This tends to be a little more sweet soup. So we're going to keep the seasonings to a minimum. Now, I told you two tablespoons of butter. If you want to use a little more, that's fine too. And I want to tell you right now, don't use fake butter, all right? Life is too short for fake butter and low-fat cheese. Enjoy the flavor. Unless the ingredients, or unless the recipe calls for canola oil or something like that, use the real stuff. Okay, we're almost done with our onion here. I don't want to brown the onion. I just want to cook it until it's softened and translucent, as I mentioned. Then we're going to add our chicken broth. So I'm going to go ahead and add some, uh, some chicken broth here. I'm going to start with a quart. I've got a quart and a half. I'm going to add this here and make a good mess out of my stove while I'm at it. I'm going to bring this to a boil, obviously. This is going to make enough soup for six to eight people. I'm going to wait for this broth and the onion to come to a boil. The onion is going to continue to soften. I'm going to let the squash and the potatoes boil for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're soft. Don't make them mushy and don't overcook them. Uh, then we're going to add them to the food processor and make some soup. All right, so these have been boiling about 15 minutes, starting to soften up. The uh, butternut squash softens a little bit sooner than the potatoes. But make sure that both of them are soft when you uh, put them in the food processor. I'm going to go ahead and add the paprika. That was about one teaspoon of paprika, by the way. It's not just for your mom's deviled eggs anymore. I'm not going to use all of the broth. Depends on how soupy you want it and how, you know, creamy and rich you want it. So I'm going to use a good share of it, and then I'm going to finish it with half and half. I'm going to go ahead and put some broth in here. And then we're going to blend it. Okay, now I didn't pulse it, I put it on full, because I want it to be really creamy and I really want to puree everything so it's nice and smooth. There you go, that's the creamy consistency that I wanted. Alright, so I've got about a cup of half and half. You can use heavy cream if you want. Don't overdo it with the cream, you really don't want to completely uh, 
uh, take the flavor away and dilute it with too much dairy product. But you do want the creamy consistency of, uh, of the cream. I love the colors and uh, just the look of a good butternut squash biscuit. It's just pretty. The, the heat is on medium right now. You don't really need to bring it to a boil again. You're done cooking it. You just need to warm it up to uh, the temperature you want to serve it at. Don't overdo it. Don't bring it to a boil with dairy products in it because you'll mess it up. All right, guys. We have just made butternut squash bisque. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, obviously I've got it set up for courses. You don't need to, if you're doing courses, you know, fill the bowl to the rim. Just uh, about a half a bowl is fine. Don't want to spoil their appetites, but you want to uh, titillate them a little bit. So I'm going to serve the butternut squash bisque on the salad plate. Now you can add some chives on top, uh, fresh chopped chives, or you can actually leave whole strips of them and do kind of a decorative appearance on top. And also, if you'd like, you can ask your guests if they'd like a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. And there it is, guys. Very simple and will make you a rock star in your home. Butternut squash bisque. To watch the other segments in this video series or for how-to videos on almost any other topic, visit monkeysee.com.